Hi, Keith here with another statistical video, this time looking at primer and looking at the effect of different transformations on the biological data. Now before I go on, with the biological data we do have options of different transformations. With the environmental data, the usual situation is to simply normalize and then proceed but with the biological data there are options. Now to look at this properly I need to use real data rather than the uh, simulated data that I often use and I'm using one of the sample data sets that comes with Primer 6, the Bristol Channel Zooplankton. So you can see the rows here are for different zooplankton species and the columns represent samples or in particular sites. If I look at factors, you'll see that each has been given a number from 1 through to 9, a salinity level. Okay, so here's the untransformed data. And you can see that the abundance varies from relatively small numbers through to some larger numbers with counts in the thousands, even tens of thousands. So what's going to happen here is that the resemblance measure is going to be dominated by some of these species that are in very high abundance, even up to 34,000 there. And taxa that are less common are really not going to have much influence. So the usual situation here would be to use some kind of transform to downweight the most abundant species. Before doing that we might go to a draftsman plot which I've already drawn here to get an idea of the distributions. Now because there's a fairly large number of taxa here the individual plots are quite small and it's difficult to pick up much of what's going on but we can see some taxa here in very small numbers and others which are clearly in higher numbers. Now you see in the left hand panel, I've already done a lot of work here, I've got the resemblance matrix for the untransformed. Now this would be uh, Bray-Curtis, so it's going from similarity 0 to 100. And then I've gone square root, that's the data, there's the resemblance matrix. Next one, um, fourth root, log, and then finally all the way down to present absence. So if you look at the data here, it's all zeros and ones depending on whether the species is present or absent. Now to look at the patterns in these we, we would normally do an MDS. So here's the MDS for the untransformed, the MDS for the square root and the MDS for the presence absence and I've got them there rather small so that I can fit them all on the display and you can see the untransformed and square root are fairly similar. Um, they're both showing the arch type of pattern that is common when you're looking at species or sampling sites that run along a strong environmental gradient. Presence absence, as you might expect, has changed the pattern quite substantially. So in both the untransformed and the square root, we got levels 1, 2, level last, linear level 1, 2, and 3, and 4 and 5. For the present time, it's much more jumbled, although there still is that trend for increasing salinity right to left. Now, another way of looking at at these data would be to do a PCO, principal coordinates ordination. Remember that NMDS doesn't use the actual distances or resemblances, it uses the ranks of those. So let's pop up PCO untransformed and compare it to the MDS untransformed. Now if I flip Y the PCO is showing much the same sort of thing as the MDS, but the arch effect is much stronger there, and that is because 
the distances are actually being used rather than just the ranks of those distances or in fact it's break curves so I should be saying similarities. So now let's go PCO square root similar sort of thing as we saw before remember the or orientation of these doesn't matter so I can flip them to get them matching up so as with the NMDS the square root data show a slightly less pronounced arch effect than the untransformed and then if we go to PCO for the presence absence similar sort of pattern to what we saw with the NMDS there's still a trend in there but the arch effect has been removed now one thing you'll note um, if you look at the axes and it's a little small as we go from the raw untransformed data to the square root and then to the presence absence the percentage of variation accounted for by axis 1 increases about 30% here 45% here and nearly 55% here and this will be in part due to the fact that the presence absence is simplifying some of the relationships so they are easier to represent for axis 2 it doesn't actually change much it's always around about 20% now to get a more to get a clearer overview of the effect of the transformation or the different transformations than just visually we can use second stage analysis so if I click here on uh, untransform go up to analyze to stage I'm interested here in the effect of the transform so you can see I've selected multiple matrices and look at the um, resemblance matrix so here we go so what we get here are correlations among multiple resemblance matrices and because each of these resemblance matrices is based on matrices is based on the same data but transformed the correlations are quite high as you would expect they're smallest for the presence absence um, but quite high for the others so untransformed and square root uh, 0.98 to get a better idea of this, analyze MDS. Here we go, untransformed, square root, fourth root, log, and presence absence off on the side here. So the square root is having some effect on the data, but not a huge effect. And then the fourth root and the logarithm have a considerably larger effect and the effect of those two transforms is not markedly different presence absence is off to the side of all of the other four because we're removing all of the abundance information we're being left here with just presence absence and so that has as you might expect and as we've seen in the PCO and NMDS that has the biggest effect so transform to presence absence would be unusual unless there were very specific circumstances square root will have some effect fourth root and logarithm will have a considerably larger effect on the patterns now it's not a matter here of using one of these automatically it's a matter of looking at the actual data and thinking about the balance between the species presence absence information and the abundance information Hopefully that is of some help to some.